Um, hey, yeah. Uh, so I've just finished reading The Secret History of the World by Mark Booth and uh, or Jonathan Black or whatever other pseudonym he writes under. Um, I just thought I'd share my thoughts on what I think is the best book I've ever read. Um, this book is not an encyclopedia. It's a truly inspiring account of how the world works and challenges our everyday commonsensical view of the world. Um, you know, we see the world through, through the lens of a positivist epistemology. You know, there are certain patterns that are observable, measurable, verifiable, that uh, the world, uh, that the things in the world follow. But according to this book, the universe is fine-tuned in such a way which makes human experience possible. And the, f the way that everything works so perfectly in nature is just a reflection of how everything is perfectly orchestrated to make the human experience possible. And by human experience, I mean introspection, thinking about life, living in a state of constant self-examination, having that internal witness, conscience, whatever you want to call it, just you know, all that stuff that goes on in our head, or what we think is our head. And that the greatest people in our history, from Napoleon, Alexander the Great, Beethoven, Shakespeare, Einstein, George Washington, even key contemporary political figures believe in the secret history in um, so-called idealism in philosophical terms that ideas are more real than matter and that matter stems from ideas not because they've weighed both arguments um, like not because they've weighed the arguments on both sides of the debate but because they experienced the world in an idealistic way, meaning they were actually able to interact with their spirit guides, with disembodied beings who guided them towards their destiny. And by listening to these spirit guides, by interacting with them, um, they inevitably um, had an effect on our history and um, helped the evolution of our collective consciousness. consciousness. And every every word just rings rings with truth. We know deep down that there's more to life than just than just what science is willing to admit, you know, and that the key answers that we're searching for, you know, about love, our purpose in life friendship, trust, betrayal, all these themes. We don't, we don't search for the answers in science. We, we look towards literature, art, our own experiences. And I just can't help feeling that this book is entirely true because it encourages us, us to trust our own experience. And in my experience, ever since I've been delving into all the spiritual stuff, I've seen a lot of synchronicities take place. A lot of coincidences that are too meaningful to be coincidences. And there is a certain fabric, a certain essence to life that we're 
we often ignore because we're just stuck in this materialistic, egocentric worldview, which which is what um, the Antichrist essentially is. And by Antichrist, I do not mean a person with one eye and and um, and horns on his head, but just the concept, the phenomenon of being materialistic and um, just being concerned with having things instead of focusing on becoming a better person. Um, that's what the Antichrist is. It wants us to be pure matter. It wants to keep us away from our true essence, which is light. It wants we're just matter, um, according to the Antichrist. And um, all the key answers to life that we've we search for are meaningless. We're here just to make profit, earn a living, survive, procreate. Um, our dreams are meaningless. And that's kind of a laughable claim because the greatest people in our history all had dreams. And we are, we are here today experiencing the world today because of their dreams and dreams we no one knows where that comes from the eye of the heart the eye of the imagination are organs of perception which can be trained and a true and meaningful life is a life that involves alchemy the metaphorical transformation of base metals into gold spiritual work believing in our dreams and the power of our dreams so much so that we can overcome adversity and see the beauty in disaster in the most horrible of times because each and every moment is a stepping stone towards our destiny is meaningful and when we have dreams spiritual transformation takes place alchemy takes place as opposed to just living in an egocentric um, worldview where everything is just seen as a means to an end uh, where all our relationships are transactional where love is just just an illusion where everything is based on economics according to Marx or sex according to Freud because it is in those moments of not knowing in those mysterious moments where the whole cosmos holds its breath because we're here to help evolved our collective consciousness we're not here just to do the work of the antichrist work a nine to five be nothing more than cogs in a machine we're here to express the universe in a unique way in our own unique way because we're all unique So that's it. The purpose of life is have is a life of purpose. So simple. You can believe that and see the magic take place. And I'm not going to try to convince you. I'm just going to ask you to trust your own experience and be open-minded. Or you can carry on living the way you are living. And let those burning questions in your heart keep burning. Or try to bury them. Keep burying them. Just because you do not want to confront your deepest fear. Which is not being inadequate. But which is that we are limitless. And you are scared of your own power. And that's the only, that's the only problem. We are the ones we have been waiting for. And when we realize that, magic will take place. And the soul will overcome the ego and the second coming of Christ will be upon us.